Hello everyone, welcome back to Z Physics. Today we are going to be talking about the weak nuclear force. So far we have looked at three different fundamental interactions. One of them is the gravitational interaction. We also looked at electromagnetism and the strong nuclear force. Well, today we'll be looking at probably my favorite fundamental interaction, which is the weak nuclear interaction, also known as the weak nuclear force. It is the only interaction that can take one particle and turn it into a completely different particle. For that reason, I sometimes like to refer to it as the chameleon interaction. Now, let's have a look at the exact details of how this works with the help of beta plus and beta minus decay. Let's switch to my digital whiteboard. As we said, with the aid of the weak nuclear force, a particle can turn into a completely different particle. For instance, a neutron can turn into a proton. In order to balance out this equation, we need to add a few more particles. For instance, if I was to add an electron, like so, minus one zero, then the charge will be conserved. We also get a product of this reaction as well, an additional one, which is our anti-neutrino, which is this light particle which has uh, essentially it has no charge and it doesn't carry any um, any nucleons it is just a lepton this is an example of uh, beta minus decay so beta minus decay and it is one of the types of radiation a neutron turns into a proton if we think fundamentally though what happens to the individual constituents of the neutron and the proton we can rewrite the same equation in terms of the quark model for instance we know that the neutron consists of two down quarks and one anti up quark this will turn into a proton which consists of essentially two ups and one down. So essentially what we're seeing is that one of those down quarks has turned into an up quark. And we also of course get the electron minus one zero and our neutrino which is zero zero. Sometimes students find it quite tricky to remember which reaction has the anti-neutrino, which reaction has the uh, just the normal neutrino. One useful rule of thumb to remember is that the electron, if you can see the minus sign here, you, you can also write a little dash on top, signifying that you are dealing with an anti-neutrino. Notice that in this reaction, additionally, charge is conserved. So the neutron has an overall charge of zero, hence it's called the neutron. And over here, we have a proton, which has a charge of one, and an electron balances this out by having a charge of minus one, and hence the overall charge on the left, zero, equals the overall charge on the right, zero. We can also have beta plus decay, which um, turns a proton into a neutron. In order to balance this, because the charge on the left is 1, we'll also need a charge after the decay to be also 1. So if only there was a particle with very similar or exactly the same properties as an electron, but positive. Well, of course we do, and this is the positron. So we can add a little positron over here, so that'll be plus 1 zero and now we no longer get the anti-neutrino we just get a neutrino over here on the right hand side this is the beta plus decay beta pl a beta plus particle you might sometimes uh, hear this uh, referred to in a, in a problem or in textbooks and what they mean is simply a positron and a beta minus particle is simply an electron Okay, hey folks, well, hopefully beta minus and beta plus decay make sense now. If there are any questions, do let me know. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.